Please join with me in reciting these words, which call us together as a community and with Unitarian Universalists all across the globe. We light this chalice to remind ourselves to treat all people kindly because we are all one family, to take good care of the earth because it is our home, to live lives full of goodness and love because that is how we will become the best people we can be. The Antlered Ship, written by Dashka Slater and illustrated by the Fan Brothers. The day the antlered ship arrived, Marco wondered about the wide world. He had so many questions. Why do some songs make you happy and others make you sad? Why don't trees ever talk? How deep does the sun go when it sinks into the sea? But when he posed these questions to the other foxes, they grew silent. What does that have to do with chicken stew, they would ask. So Marco went down to the harbor to see the ship. Three deer greeted him at the gangplank. Marco wasn't surprised to learn that they were lost. We hope to hire a seaworthy crew, explained Sylvia, the captain. I'm afraid we aren't very good sailors. I will join you, Marco said. He thought to himself, I will search the seas for foxes who know the answers to my questions. A pigeon named Victor volunteered along with the entire flock. We want to have adventures, they cooed. Welcome aboard, Captain Sylvia said. We're going to a wonderful island with tall, sweet grass and short, sweet trees. When we get there, we'll eat a delectable dinner. But the voyage was more difficult than anyone expected. It rained. Waves crashed over the side of the deck. Why is water so wet? Marco wondered. The pigeons weren't used to the hard work of raising and lowering the sails. After the first day, they went below decks to play checkers and they stayed there. The deer worried about sharp rocks and fierce pirates and feeling seasick. They huddled in the bow and waited for something bad to happen. After days of drifting and dining on crackers, the animals were damp and cranky. We should have stayed in the woods, Sylvia said. Deer aren't supposed to go to sea. We should have stayed in the park, added Victor. Pigeons aren't supposed to do hard labor. Marco eyed the deer and the pigeons. Foxes aren't supposed to be vegetarian, he said. Still, we must do the best we can. That evening, Marco found a recipe book in the galley and cooked a warm and reviving stew. Should we look at the charts, he asked, after everyone had eaten. We might find adventure here, said Victor, and trouble here, said Sylvia, but we'll find the island with tall, sweet grass and short, sweet trees here, and perhaps foxes too, Marco thought, foxes with answers. As they plotted their course, the wind picked up. The storm clouds thinned into marvelous swirls. Raise the sails, Sylvia cried. In the morning, they came to the maze of sharp rocks, each one large enough to tear the bottom of the boat. But the pigeons flew ahead, tracing a path through the shoals and sharp rocks to the safety of the open sea. The next afternoon, a pirate ship burst from behind a rocky island. 
Turn over your treasure, the pirate captain bellowed, or we'll put a hole in your helm. Lower the antlers, Sylvia commanded. The ships clashed, and they crashed, and they smashed until the pirates turned and fled. That evening, an island appeared on the horizon with tall waving grasses and short swaying trees. We've found it, Sylvia cried. We've triumphed, Victor cooed. Do you see any foxes? Marco asked. The deer grazed the grass and nibbled the trees. The pigeons told stories of their adventures to a flock of admiring seagulls. Marco scoured the island for foxes. But he didn't find any. I have failed, Marco told Victor and Sylvia. No foxes. No one to answer my questions. What questions? Victor asked. Marco took a deep breath. Do islands like being alone? Do waves look more like horses or swans? And what's the best way to find a friend you can talk to? That last one's easy, Sylvia said. You make friends by eating together. I disagree, said Victor. You make friends by having adventures together. Maybe you're both right, Marco said, but I think you make friends by asking them questions. Well then, mused Sylvia, should we go home tomorrow or should we visit the island of scrumptious shrubbery? Are two adventures enough, asked Victor, or should we have at least one more? Is it better to know what's going to happen, wondered Marco, or better to be surprised? There were so many questions left to answer and so many more to ask. So in the morning, they raised the anchor and hoisted the heavy sails. They knew now that the wind would come and go, the clouds would sometimes make marvelous swirls and sometimes make them wet and that everything they hoped to find could be found aboard an antlered ship. On their way to wherever they were going. We come together every Sunday and all throughout the week for more than ourselves we come to support one another and the ministries that infuse worth and dignity into our children, our youth, our programs of learning and leadership, and our ministries in the larger world, including our efforts towards anti-racism and anti-oppression. Please make a contribution toward these worthy causes by mailing your check to Mission Peak Yugu Congregation at the address on the screen you can also use the bill pay option in your online banking or drop your check in the Mission Peak mail slot or pay online with a credit or debit card. Thank you for supporting and sustaining the efforts of our members, friends, and staff. Your contributions make loving, learning, and leadership more possible. One of the things that allows us to find hope and meaning especially in the hard times where there are so many questions that abound, is the love and the support we show one another. If you have a joy or a concern that by sharing with this caring community might bring a measure of hope or healing or resilience, please write it briefly now in the chat. If your need is more personal, you can also send an email to me or to Reverend Barbara, and we will respond shortly.
say your name.